Cathalhu Online, Munya. Chapter 21 to 30. Chapter 21 Cat Dad's Sprint Burst. Ding. Zio Mao stared at the notification panel while he was sitting on the dirty rock in front of the dungeon entrance. He sighed. What a waste of time. I should at least skip school for three days and play the game all day and all night. Oh, wait. I haven't slept properly yet. I guess I have to sleep in class or something. Zio Mao left the dungeon cave and came back to the abandoned port. He thought of something and remembered that his fisher bot was in the middle of the work. Zio Mao opened Slave 1's status menu. At the instruction and order box, he manually assigned instructions, waypoints, and actions that Slave 1 needed to perform next. The orders were compiled under a new shortcut Noel Dungeon Transport. Zio Mao asked Slave 1 to come to the island and transport his items back to the warehouse chest in the Labor Guild's apartment by using the waypoints that Zio Mao had programmed. After transporting everything, Slave 1 needed to carry on fishing until further instructions. Once the programming task was completed, Zio Mao unloaded equipment items from his inventory slots to the ground. After Zio Mao had finished arranging his items, 100 pairs of boots were neatly placed in rows and columns. That was Zio Mao's harvest of the day. Level, 10. EXP, 460,000 slash 700,000. Contribution level, 1. Packed weekly income, 1 slash 100. EXP, 10 slash 160 comma 000. Status attributes. STR, 50 plus 25 dex 50 plus 25 agi 50 plus 25 vit 50 plus 25 int 50 plus 25 wis 50 plus 25 allocable status points 250 spiritual roots fire 1 water 1. Wind, 1. Metal, 1. Wood, 1. Lightning, 1. Darkness, 1. Light, 1. Allocable status points, 250. Gaining 9 levels within a night was not something to brag about. However, it was a different story if the NFT character's rarity was super rare or ultra rare. Common NFT only needed 1000 EXP to advance from level 1 to level 2. Uncommon NFT required 5000 EXP to do the same thing. Rare NFT required 10,000 EXP. Super Rare NFT required 50,000 EXP. And Ultra Rare NFT required 100,000 EXP. The disparity between thresholds was like heaven and earth. However, the reward was worth the grind as long as the player knew what to do. Zio Mao's tentacles trembled as he admired the prize of his effort. Still, he refused to add any point to his status attributes or spiritual roots for now. Log out. Log out. Don't get too addicted. Zio Mao had done everything he could. He left them for Slave 1 to pick the items on the ground and finish his duty. Whoosh. Ding. Zio Mao slowly opened his eyes. Again, Muniang had been menacingly staring at his face while he sat on the capsule's hatch glass. The cat meowed and tried to wake his slave as he was hungry. Zio Mao opened the hatch and chased Muniang away from the game capsule. As he got up, he frowned. Did he allow Muniang inside his room last night? Whatever. That was not something he should be caring about. Muniang was a smart cat, and he had seen the naughty cat opening doors by himself several times. Zio Mao shrugged and abandoned the thought. He walked toward the bathroom for the morning shower. Ten minutes later, Zio Mao stood in front of the bathroom mirror. He picked up his toothbrush and toothpaste to brush his teeth. As soon as Zio Mao looked at his reflection in the mirror, he paused. Zio Mao rubbed his eyes. Then, he wiped the mirror with a piece of clean toilet paper to get a clearer vision. In the mirror, Zio Mao's sclera was black while his pupils were yellowish. 
Xiao Mao shut his eyes and concentrated. After a minute of meditation, he reopened his eyes and looked at himself in the mirror again. The white sclera and brown pupils were the same as usual. Xiao Mao almost had a heart attack. Those black sclera and golden pupils were the eyes of Chaos Demon God's apostles and players from Chaos Demon God's faction. I'm mutating too fast. But wait. I should have inherited the catapus traits, but why did my eyes turn yellow? Why am I mutating into a Chaos Demon God's apostle? He tried to summon his status menu by closing his eyes. As usual, the blue menu screens appeared behind Xiao Mao's eyelids. He could vaguely see the numbers, but he couldn't read the texts. It's there, but I'm evolving too fast. At this rate, I'll awaken my superpower within a month. But how? Xiao Mao was confused. In his previous life, nobody could awaken their power within a month after playing the game. Even those nasty politicians and oligarchs couldn't get awaken their superpower even though they had UR characters. Unless... Xiao Mao narrowed his eyes, compatibility and synchronization rate. I saw the article somewhere, but I can't remember. He sighed. He regretted that he didn't research or study enough in his previous life as he was too busy farming items in-game to make money. Xiao Mao left the bathroom and went back into his room. He opened his laptop to find related articles about promo game consoles and player compatibility, including the first game from the company. There were plenty of articles. However, they only researched how they could improve the control efficiency of their in-game characters. Even the old articles about in-game character integration and synchronization were outdated as all of them were debunked by scientists. They believed that nobody could import game systems to reality or mutate human DNA and genes. They thought that players were used to the physical prowess in the game that their minds ingrained the muscle memory into their real bodies. Of course, the scientists didn't know anything. It was a mistake on their part since they didn't know the dark hands of Pangu Incorporation. It was obvious no one had found out about the system integration yet. Most players played the game to either earn money or improve their real body's physicality by increasing their in-game status attributes as how they did in the first game a decade ago. Xiao Mao closed his laptop. He pondered for a moment, analyzing how he mutated so fast. Oh, right. Isn't Dad working for Pangu Incorporate? He should know something. Xiao Mao smacked his forehead. He put on his clothes and rushed to the kitchen. Mom. Dad. Xiao Mao entered the kitchen. However, his parents were not there. He looked at the kitchen table as the prepared food caught his eyes. Several sealed plastic sealed plates of food were on the kitchen table. Under one of the plates, Xiao Mao's parents left two pieces of notes for him. Mom and Dad have to go to LA for a month. Breakfast is on the table. As for dinner and the following day's food, you're on your own. You still have money, right? If you run out of cash, you're on your own, too. Be an adult and manage your money well. Don't invest everything into the game and starve yourself. Next note. This one had the handwriting of Xiao Mao's mother. Don't call us unless you're in a coma or a dead bed. If you call me while you're alive, I'll disown you. How the hell can I call you after I'm dead? Mom. Xiao Mao was disappointed and excited at the same time. He was disappointed because he didn't get to consult with his parents face to face. His mother also threatened him not to call them. However, Xiao Mao was excited that his parents weren't here to monitor him. Without the nosy guardians, Xiao Mao was free to skip school and play games all day. But as Xiao Mao was unsealing the plastic wraps to eat his food, he noticed that the note had five pages. He flipped to the third page. There was the handwriting of his father. P.S. If I catch you playing hooky, I'll disown you. Next page. P.S. 2. I already told your homeroom teacher that you're not sick. They will tell me if you skip school. Last page. P.S. 3. As one of Pangu Incorporate's workers, I have my ways to check your online time. 
I know what you're thinking, and I can see what you did. Although we're glad that you've picked the right game to play, manage your freaking time, all right. Xiao Mao face palmed. His father read him like a book. All right. Fine. I'll go to school. Xiao Mao ate the food and restocked the cat's food bowls. Then, he went to school in a dejected mood. After walking out of the house, Xiao Mao felt strange today. He wasn't as sleepy as yesterday. In addition, he felt like his body was more flexible. He was confident that he could do the split without getting hurt. Testing his limits and the current state of the game status integration, Xiao Mao sprinted to school. Xiao Mao ran at a human speed at first. But after two seconds, he discovered that his legs and feet were like a machine. The wind him his face harder than usual, and he could sense the wind resistance. He was fast. I am speed, Munya. There were obstacles, and Xiao Mao swiftly dodged and leaped over them like a parkour master. Running for five minutes, Xiao Mao reached the school. Unfortunately, Xiao Mao wasn't used to the newfound speed. He failed to control his legs and decelerate. As a result, he entered the school's premises at a speed of 50 km per hour. Crap! At this rate, he would crash onto something and get injured. Xiao Mao relaxed his legs and steered the direction from the school building toward the school's soccer field, which was surrounded by a track field. It worked. He managed to steer himself to the track and field. He controlled his upper body and let his legs guide him to the running track. It was early morning. Many sports clubs were using the track for their morning activities. Some of them were jogging in groups and didn't notice Xiao Mao's arrival. Xiao Mao paced his breath and relaxed his legs, trying to relieve the tension and decelerate. The speed slightly decreased, but his legs still auto-moved like a locomotive, not listening to Xiao Mao's commands. Crap! 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 Xiao Mao gritted his teeth and kept breathing worrying that he might be out of breath soon. Betraying his expectation, Xiao Mao wasn't tired. He felt like he could run several kilometers at his full speed. The full sprint began to attract the attention of students. They looked at him while some of the club managers took out their phones to record a clip. Xiao Mao sprinted a whole lap. However, he could not stop his legs yet. At that moment, one of the club managers pressed her stopwatch to time Xiao Mao. She was a second-year sophomore senior and the track club's manager. As soon as the girl began timing Xiao Mao, the other runners walked toward her and looked at the watch. They looked at each other with wide eyes as if they had witnessed the birth of a monster. While the managers and the track and field athletes were in shock, the passerby students found Xiao Mao funny as the guy had been running while wearing a regular student uniform. One of them suddenly cheered for him. Run, Forrest. Run. Xiao Mao overheard that. He inwardly cried. Chapter 22 Cat Dad is Wet. Who is that guy? One of the female track club members looked at Xiao Mao in envy. Her friends swiped through her phone and noticed the picture of Xiao Mao, who was running away from a group of girls, I remember him. I saw him several times. I think he's the first-year guy that seconded the last year's school exams. Has he entered any club yet? I don't know. Let's ask him when he's done running. As today was not an official day, every high school student in China wore a tracksuit as their school uniform. Even Xiao Mao was forced to wear one. At first, Xiao Mao didn't feel anything. But after running for a while, his body began to sweat. Soon. Xiao Mao sweated bullets. Even if it was winter, Xiao Mao sweated a lot as his body pumped blood to support his muscles, and his body temperature kept rising. The back of his tracksuit jacket and his t-shirt were drenched in sweat. Even his underwear was also wet, which made Xiao Mao uncomfortable as he kept running. Aside from the wet shirt, pants, and underwear, his legs and lungs were fine. Slowly but surely, Xiao Mao regained the senses of his legs after letting them autopilot him for 20 minutes. He managed to slow down to a jogging speed. 
Then, he managed to stop completely. He let out a sigh of relief, but his uniform was soaked with his sweat. Soon, his clothes would be as smelly as a fish. Woo! That's quite a morning workout, Munya. Xiao Mao used the jacket's sleeves to wipe his face. He staggered toward a faucet near the track to get some water. But as Xiao Mao was using the faucet, one of the track club girls offered him a towel. She was a tall tanned pretty girl with thick firm thighs and a flat chest. Her short brown trimmed hair looked attractive for an athlete high school girl. The student wore the same tracksuit uniform even though she was in the middle of her club activity. However, she tied her jacket around her waist and showed her crop top sports bra. Xiao Mao's eyes were attracted to her ABS and cores, which looked more refined than his. Hello, Mr. Gump. Did you have fun? Xiao Mao looked at the girl's face. Hmm. Wei Ji, the ONI Valkyrie. He remembered her. In his previous life, this girl was one of the famous superhero celebrities and one of the top players in Pangu Online too. This girl stood out for her leadership, charisma, and cool look. As she used an ONI Warlord, aka an ultra-rare NFT as her in-game character, everybody nicknamed her ONI Valkyrie. Looking at the soon-to-be celebrity girl, Xiao Mao Riley smiled as he politely accepted the white towel and cleaned his face with it. Then, he returned it to the girl. I'm no Forrest Gump, Munya. Is it fashionable to end your sentence with a weird word these days? Wei Ji dryly laughed. Xiao Mao awkwardly averted his eyes and Riley smiled, I have a mental disease, Munya. I can't talk normally in front of people, Munya. The girl laughed and accepted the towel back, you're a quick runner. How about joining the track and field club? No, thanks, Munya. I have to work part-time after school, Munya. You sure? You just broke the world records for 400 meter sprinting and 1,000 meter sprinting just now. You can easily apply to compete in the Olympics, you know? Do you know how much an Olympic gold medalist of our country can earn? They pumped it to a million USD last time. You can even earn more than your part-time job. Xiao Mao's heart was wavered. He thought about it as well. However, as tempting as it was, Xiao Mao shook his head, Sorry, Munya. I already have other plans. The girl pouted, looking frustrated. As Wei Ji had been chatting with Xiao Mao, the other clubbers on the track field rushed to him. Several men in sports gear shouted. Comrade, join the soccer club. No. The tennis club needs you. To hell? Don't listen to them. You can thrive in the basketball club with your stamina and speed. Xiao Mao sweated profusely. He turned tail and ran away, entering the school building. Nuyu. Come back. Let's talk. The men chased after Xiao Mao, leaving the track girl alone. After the men had left, many track club girls came to talk with their captain, who had chatted with Xiao Mao. Senior Wei. How's the prospect? Wei Ji, aka the captain of the track and field club, was currently an athlete star of the school. She had won five provincial sports competitions as a full marathoner, and she was a candidate to compete in countrywide track sports competitions. She smiled at her colleagues, unfortunately, he's a chunny. Ha! Huh. I mean, he's not into sports clubs. Forget about him. Are we giving up on him that easily? That run just now has broken several world records. I'll do something about that. You girls just concentrate on improving your time. Also, what were your grades in the last exam? The girls looked away as they weren't proud of their grades. Get back on the field or read the books, girly. Boo! The track girls stopped looking at Xiao Mao and returned to the track field. As for Wei Ji, she simply sneaked a glance at the rowdy group, who had been chasing Xiao Mao. She pursed her lips. Hmm. Nobody knew what she had been thinking. She went back to the girls' locker room and changed her clothes. 
Zio Mao managed to lose the sports club members by gluing himself on the ceiling like the Spider-Man. After they were gone, he jumped down from the ceiling and patted his clothes. His tracksuit jacket and pants were dirty with sweat and dust. He sniffed on it once, and he regretted it. Ugh! I can't enter the class like this. It reeks. Zio Mao sneaked to the backyard of the school. He took off his jacket and t-shirt to wash them with the outdoor faucet's water. Again, it was a bad decision. He might be able to clean the dirt and smell, but he couldn't possibly dry it before the homeroom class began. After washing all the dirt, Zio Mao looked at his wet shirt and jacket. Then, he looked at his pants, where his groin area was still wet. No matter how he looked at it, someone else could have misunderstood him and thought that Zio Mao had peed himself. I might as well go home and change my clothes. Or, should I go see a teacher and ask them if they have a drying machine? Zio Mao twisted the shirt and shook it, trying to dry his shirt. Ding dong! It was 8 a.m. The homeroom class would start soon. Zio Mao groaned and walked toward the school building entrance while he wore the wet t-shirt and the jacket. As most students had already entered their classroom, only a few students noticed Zio Mao's drenched clothes. Zio Mao was embarrassed. He dryly smiled and embraced all the shame. Suddenly, one of the students grabbed Zio Mao's arm and pulled him. Unfortunately for her, Zio Mao didn't budge. Zio Mao turned around and discovered that Wei Ji was trying to pull him somewhere. She frowned and stared at Zio Mao's thick arms. Wei Ji looked at Zio Mao's face and frowned, Don't resist and come with me. I'll help you. Currently, Wei Ji had changed her clothes and wore a new tracksuit uniform. She had the smell of baby powder and light perfume. Zio Mao swallowed his manly urge and shook off his immature thought. He continued to remind himself that a romantic relationship between high schoolers was a waste of precious time. He could use that time for gaming and grinding for levels. Still, Zio Mao obediently followed her. He kept his mental guard up against all possible seduction and temptation. Wei Ji dragged Zio Mao to the track club's changing room for girls. Then, she asked Zio Mao to sit on the bench and wait there. H here, Munya. Zio Mao was nervous as he didn't like being in a female locker room alone with another girl. He was afraid that he might get assaulted soon. Betraying his expectation, Wei Ji tossed a new set of tracksuits and a new towel at him. Change to that and give me your clothes. My club has a washer machine and a dryer machine. I'll take care of that. Oh oh. Zio Mao was so surprised that he forgot to Munya. He obediently and happily changed his clothes. But there was a problem. Wei Ji was staring at him. UMM, could you mind, Munya? Wei Ji rolled her eyes and turned around, fine. It's not like I want to see it. Zio Mao was relieved. He quickly changed his clothes to a new ones. Though he had to go commando as he didn't have a spare underwear. However, the new pants and jacket were too small. He could only barely put the new polo shirt on. UMM, it's kinda small. Zio Mao glanced at Wei Ji. That's actually my spare clothes. Eh. Zio Mao was taken aback. But before he said anything, Wei Ji pointed out his mistakes. What you did this morning was a rookie sportsman's carelessness. You should have brought spare clothes if you want to work out and get sweaty in the morning. I see. Zio Mao smacked his forehead, blaming himself for testing his new power without preparation. Next time, he would do it on holiday where nobody could see him. Wei Ji took Zio Mao's wet clothes and put them in the club's washing machine. Without looking at Zio Mao, she asked him the same question. Are you sure that you won't be joining the track and field club? Zio Mao shook his head again, sorry. I have something else to do. I hope it's not gaming. Right in the black heart. Zio Mao almost had a heart attack. He tried to change the subject, Air, aside from joining the club, why are you helping me? Wei Ji laughed, 
I need you to do me a favor. Xiao Mao finally realized what was going on. Nothing in the world was free. I won't join your club no matter what, Munya. Nat, it's fine, Wei Ji grinned and turned around. She looked at the pants that Xiao Mao was wearing and noticed that they were too short for Xiao Mao's long legs. She burst into laughter. Ha ha ha. Oh, excuse me, Wei Ji coughed and corrected herself, you don't need to join my club. I only need you to join a competition instead of me since I'm in the middle of a recuperating. Is that necessary, Munya? Xiao Mao didn't like it as he didn't want to waste his gaming time and working time. You won't be doing it for free. The winner of that event gets 20,000 RMB. Xiao Mao's eyes glittered when Wei Ji mentioned the prize money, tell me more, Munya. Chapter 23 Cat Dad is Nutcracker Getting additional cash coincided with Xiao Mao's goal. After all, he needed to invest more into the game to boost his character's status points. Noticing Xiao Mao's enthusiasm, Wei Ji was satisfied. She explained, it's a half marathon race with a lot of sponsors. You need to run 21 kilometers and finish first to earn the prize money. Are you up for the challenge? Challenge accepted. When, Munya. Xiao Mao gave Wei Ji a thumbs up as he thought of it as easy money. Wei Ji giggled, this Sunday, 8.30 am. Our school's bus will take our members to the event site so we have to be here before seven. Isn't it like, in two days, Munya? Currently, it was Friday. Xiao Mao was taken aback that Wei Ji wanted him to race without preparation. Ha ha ha. That's right. Are you up for it? Half marathon is easy. Matt, fine. I'll do it. Is the winning prize really 20k RMB, Munya? Of course. I'll register your name for it. By the way, what's your class and your name again? Wani, e, Miao Xiao Mao. Wei Ji extended her hand for a handshake, 2B, Wei Ji. Both shook hands. Then, Wei Ji discovered that Xiao Mao's calloused hand was slightly rough, which was different from other babyface guys who had never done any chore or housework. You really worked hard. Can you let go of my hand? Munya. Sorry. Wei Ji let go of Xiao Mao's hand. As soon as the latter was freed, he decided to flee from here before something bad could happen. I have to go to class. I'll leave that registration task to you. See, Ye, Munya. Just like that, Xiao Mao dashed out of the girls' locker room and sprinted toward his class. Wei Ji brightly smiled and looked at her hand. The warmth of Xiao Mao's hand still lingered on hers. At least, he's not a horn dog like Niu Fu. Xiao Mao managed to return to his classroom. As soon as he entered, everyone in class looked at him as if they were seeing an alien. The homeroom teacher only glanced at Xiao Mao, working out in the morning is good and all, but you mustn't forget to manage your time. Get to your seat, Mr. Gump. Everyone in the room laughed as they also saw Xiao Mao's deeds. Even Lu Bei's henchman and the brown big-breasted girl chuckled. Xiao Mao lowered his head in embarrassment. He got to his head. The boring morning classes went on. However, in the afternoon, Xiao Mao's eyelids got heavier, and he succumbed to the drowsiness. Xiao Mao set up a formation of books as a wall and rested his head on the desk, taking a short nap but he fell into a deep sleep. Ding! Miao Xiao Mao have been blessed with the power of 3 a.m. party. The effect lasts one hour. 3 a.m. party. During the blessing period, Miao Xiao Mao's max HP and MP are increased by 10%. Miao Xiao Mao's stamina can never decrease, and his AGI index will be increased by 10%. Ding dong! 6.00 p.m. The loud noise of the school bell woke Xiao Mao from his beauty sleep. He swallowed his drool and looked up. Fortunately, no teacher or student disturbed him. Everybody respected the 999-point scorer, and they didn't have the time to care about how he fared in school. 
The teacher ended class while half of the students packed their bags and prepared to go home. As for the rest, they gathered in groups to chat while the rest prepared for after-school activities. Xiao Mao stood up and planned to visit the cafeteria for dinner before the night shift part-time job. But as Xiao Mao entered the cafeteria, he ran into Wei Ji, who came here with her club members. The track and field club's members recognized Xiao Mao. One of the male members greeted him. Mr. Forrest Gump. Will you join the track and field club? The corner of Xiao Mao's mouth twitched, Stop calling me Forrest Gump, Munya. Okay, then. Mr. Munya, will you join the track and field club? And stop calling me Munya, Munya. Ha 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 ha. The track club girls laughed while men found Xiao Mao weird. Ending the sentences with Munya irked a few guys. As Xiao Mao was weird, the men stopped talking to him and minded their businesses. As for the girls, they pestered him. And one of them suddenly dropped a bomb. I heard you will participate the in half marathon as our club representative, is that true? As soon as she said that, the male members turned around and stared at their captain in disbelief. One of them walked out of the crowd and protested. Captain. This half marathon event is a prestige event. It will be held in our province, and all schools will send their best marathon runners to compete. Why are we sending an outsider when the spots are limited? Please reconsider, Captain. The men glanced back and forth between Xiao Mao and the protester. The protester was a second year student from the same class as Wei Ji. However, he was a short sprinter who couldn't participate in any marathon event as short runner and marathoners' constitutions and training were different. Niu Fu, the top sprinter of the club, glared at Xiao Mao, a rookie like him will tarnish our club's name if he joins the event. Imagine how you run when you start out. I'm sure he will collapse and get humiliated before the second half of the race. I saw him run. He doesn't know how to pace, and he was burnt out in 20 minutes. He can't possibly outlast the 21 kilometers race. The runner girls frowned and glared at Niufu. Hey, Niufu. I know that you are chasing after the captain's skirt, but you have no right to criticize our captain's decision. One of the girls protected Xiao Mao. She clung to his arm, trying to look good in front of him. The other girl also shouted at Niufu's face, Listen here. You're not even a marathoner. What do you know about the race? It's none of your business. Now, get your ass back to your perverted butt gawking virgin club, and don't badmouth Mr. Kitty. Niu Fu scoffed, you think I don't know? I was once a marathoner when I was in middle school before I become a sprinter. I always joined every half marathon race ever since I was ten. What do I know? Even though I'm not suited for the long distance race now, I can still get a better time than this half-ass pushover. While the track club members bickered, Xiao Mao frowned and sighed. What the hell do they want? Why couldn't they leave me alone? Xiao Mao looked at Wei Ji, asking for her help with his innocent pupils. Wei Ji noticed Xiao Mao's glance. The corners of her mouth rose into a faint smile as she found him dorky and funny. She coughed, quiet. This is the cafeteria. All club matters stay on the field in our club room. The girls nodded. Niu Fu clicked his tongue while the men chuckled and laughed at their friend's courage. As for Xiao Mao, he let out a sigh of relief and excused himself to get his food. He went to the counter and paid for his meal with a school meal ticket. Meanwhile, the track club members picked their seats. Unfortunately, Niu Fu hadn't given up yet. He had been glaring at Xiao Mao. As Xiao Mao picked up his food tray and walked toward an empty seat, Niu Fu suddenly stood up and stomped toward Xiao Mao. He sneered and lowered his hand. As soon as Niu Fu got close to Xiao Mao, he raised his hand, trying to swat Xiao Mao's tray to the ceiling and ruin his food. Xiao Mao raised his eyebrows and stared at Niu Fu's face when the latter started approaching him. His spider sense was tingling. Before Niu Fu's hand reached his tray, Xiao Mao raised the container over his head as he anticipated the classic bully's prank. 
At the same time, he raised his left leg to lightly push the former away in reflex. However, Niu Fu was too close to Xiao Mao. Instead of kicking Niu Fu's chest or belly as planned, the hard shin landed on the former's crotch area. A front kick turned into a crotch kick. Because of the full strength front kick, Xiao Mao's leg pushed Niu Fu's body upward, and his feet floated above the ground by a few millimeters. The squishy feedback impact reminded Xiao Mao of something nasty yesterday. Xiao Mao sensed that something soft had just burst. When Niu Fu's legs touched the ground again, his face reddened while his expression was distorted in pain. He collapsed on the cafeteria floor and fainted. Xiao Mao tilted his head and looked at the soon-to-be eunuch. He thought to himself. What the hell is this fool doing? Ding! Chapter 24 Cat Dad The Flash The crotch kicked and the collapse of Niu Fu caused a commotion among the male runners. They rushed from their table and surrounded Xiao Mao. One of them was taken down. Now, they were mad. You think you can get away with this, punk? Who do you think you are? You mess with our brother, you mess with me. Xiao Mao was taken aback. He paused and observed everybody. The people in the cafeteria stopped eating and looked at them with interest. The staff stopped distributing food and brought out their phones to call for help. As for Wei Ji and her friends, they were shocked by the development and ran out to get help. Xiao Mao turned his attention to the twenty friends of Niu Fu. Noticing that he was surrounded, Xiao Mao narrowed his eyes. This event reminded him of the time when he fell out with Liu Bei's goons in his previous life. That gangster brought his henchmen to lynch Xiao Mao, and Xiao Mao fought to survive. The result wasn't pretty. Xiao Mao was beaten and got hospitalized. As for the bullies, they were suspended from school for a week and returned to school later on like nothing had happened. Xiao Mao thought of how Liu Bei and his men got out of jail yesterday. Because of the thoughts, his mood was ruined. As Xiao Mao was in a bad mood, it showed on his face. He furrowed his brows and coldly looked at the track club's men. If you wanna fight me, go outside. See what I'm holding? It's a metal tray of food, a hot soup, and a cup of hot tea. If I want to, I can turn them into weapons, but I don't want to use them and waste my food. I can't also guarantee what I might do to you if we were to fight here. The friends of Niu Fu were still driven by emotion and hormones, ha? Huh? You think you're a hotshot, fool. He threw a punch at Xiao Mao's face. Xiao Mao noticed the oncoming punch. He lowered his head and let the fist hit his forehead. P.O.E.K. It hit right on Xiao Mao's forehead as planned. But Xiao Mao didn't flinch. On the other hand, the puncher held his hand, which had punched Xiao Mao. Ah! My hand! Just like what the police officer had said. Using a bare hand to punch someone on the hard bone was a guaranteed way to fracture the knuckle bones. After all, the bones of human hands were much smaller and more fragile than the solid human skull. Combined with the natural defense attribute from the game, his bones were as tough as stones. Xiao Mao let him hit on purpose to end the annoying brawl. Xiao Mao confronted the sportsman head on, I'll give you Mother Humper's three choices. 1. We go outside and duke it like a man. 2. We go separate ways so that we can eat our food and mind our own businesses. Or 3. You insist on avenging for your gay friend and hit me, and I'll let one of you punch me once, then we're done with it. Now, make your choice. Don't get cocky. The second runner scoffed and was about to punch him. Pa! Before another fist could hit Xiao Mao's face, someone had grabbed the wrist of the assailant. A muscular late middle-aged man in a jersey uniform stood behind the guy. He sneered, since when have you apes regressed to monkeys? Is lynching someone a trend these days? See Coach Wei. The 190 cm tall toned guy was the coach of the track and field club. His facial outline and refined muscles looked like someone from the Fist of the North Star series. The coach glared at the track club's men, if you have enough energy to pick a fight, how about you go back to the track and give me five laps? And no, 
Coach. We aren't fighting anyone. My eyesight is perfect 20 twentieths, you apes. I saw what you did from the beginning. Now, get those monkey asses to the field and show me five laps. No one can get your dinner until you're finished. Now, move out. The track club's men shrieked and ran out to the field. As students, they were powerless against the coach as the latter could simply expel them from the club. Then, some of them might lose their sports scholarship or support from their families. After the men were gone, the coach glanced at Niu Fu and scoffed. Then, the coach turned to Xiao Mao. Miao Xiao Mao, I assume. Xiao Mao nodded, yes, sir. I saw your application for the half marathon. Ah, that. I can't let you participate in it. Our school can only send three runners, and I don't want to waste the spot on an outsider or an amateur. Xiao Mao's shoulders slouched. He was disappointed. Fortunately, the coach hadn't done talking. But if you can finish five laps faster than those apes and put a good record, I'll add your name on the list. Are you up for the challenge? Xiao Mao widened his eyes. He repeatedly nodded, I'll do it, sir. Go then. Xiao Mao put down his food tray and dashed to the field. The coach glanced at Wei Ji and the girls' group. The captain nodded at her coach. I'll go check on them, Dad. Coach Wei was none other than Wei Ji's father. His full name was Wei Huang, a former Asian game gold medalist athlete. As Wei Huang and Wei Ji were close, the latter had consulted her father about Xiao Mao. However, Wei Huang didn't think highly of him as he thought that the morning run was a fluke. Unless Xiao Mao could show him that his speed and endurance were legit, he wouldn't send Xiao Mao to the race. Wei Huang turned to Niu Fu. He pulled out his phone from his pocket and called for an ambulance. Serve you right, you horny ape. Now, you won't have the balls to woo my daughter anymore. On the field, twenty men jogged in a triple file as it was easier to maintain the pace. They had already run half a lap, but none of them broke a sweat as they had done this a hundred times already in the past. As they were complaining in their mind, the corner of their eye noticed that Xiao Mao got on the track and began running in his tight clothes and bad sneakers. Everyone sneered. What's he doing? Then, Xiao Mao began picking the pace. He Naruto ran on the track and tried to follow after them. He must have been punished by the coach. Rip him. Who asked him to be too close to Wei Ji anyway? But seriously. Naruto run? This idiot is beyond help. The runners chuckled and focused on their breathing and pacing. Soon, they completed the first lap. The men hummed as they were relaxed at this pace. But suddenly, they heard loud footsteps from behind. Da da da. Xiao Mao was bolting at his full speed. But now, he no longer used the Naruto run as he properly used the long legs to his advantage for speeding. What? How did he catch up so fast? The group watched how Xiao Mao whizzed past them. Yet, nobody seemed agitated. Idiot. He will be out of breath soon. Yup. An idiot. They shook their head and continued running at their pace. They saved their strength and breathed to finish the run without ruining their lungs and body. The formation continued. Soon, the group completed the second lap. As everybody concentrated on their breathing, the loud footsteps came from behind again. Several of them turned around to look. Hey! Already! Xiao Mao was chopping wind with his arms while his legs moved like locomotive wheels. He lapped the runners. One lap was 400 meters, and Xiao Mao already finished the third lap. Meanwhile, Xiao Mao felt strange. For an unknown reason, he didn't feel tired at all. Odd. I was almost out of breath this morning, but how come I feel fine? Xiao Mao closed one of his eyes to check if the game system menu was still around. Indeed, it appeared behind his eyelid, just like always. Seeing that his status in-game still affected his real body, Xiao Mao let out a sigh of relief. 
He ignored the track club's group in front of him and tried to control his legs. The control was easier than the last time. Zio Mao could adjust his speed or completely stop at any time that he wanted to. Confirming his safety, Zio Mao proceeded to complete his fourth lap. But as he was completing the fourth lap, he noticed that several students had been gathering around the track to watch something. Zio Mao shrugged and ignored the crowd. In 30 seconds, Zio Mao completed the fifth lap as the coach had ordered him to. He also lapped down the group of runners for the third time. Zio Mao sneered at them while the runners stared at Zio Mao with round eyes as if they had seen a monster. They even lost their focus and ended up breaking the formation. Why a a a a a Amazing! The flash in the making. The audience suddenly clapped and cheered for Zio Mao. However, the latter was oblivious to the commotion. What? Wei Huang walked toward Zio Mao. He sized him up again, but this middle-aged man seemed to be excited by something. 3.42.53 minutes for 2,000 meters run. Are you still a human, son? Zio Mao tilted his head, what's wrong with it? You freaking broke the world record for a 2 kilometers run. What else? Oh. Ah, crap. Did I run too fast? Crap. You ran too fast. Why are you complaining? That's a freaking world record we're talking about. Wei Huang shook Zio Mao's shoulders while his nostril flared in excitement. But as he looked at Zio Mao up close, he noticed something. At first, Wei Huang sensed that Zio Mao's breathing wasn't changed, so he thought that the latter had trained hard that he got used to it. But then, Zio Mao's clothes looked strangely familiar. Although his tracksuit jacket and pants looked almost the same as other students, there was a handmade embroidery picture of a small pony anime character on the jacket's collar. That embroidery was something that Wei Ji always sew on her clothes. It was her signature and the marking that the clothes were hers. Why was Zio Mao wearing his daughter's uniform? The happy and elated expression of Wei Huang darkened. His hands squeezed Zio Mao's shoulders while he exuded intense murderous intent. Look here, you little ape. Why are you wearing my daughter's uniform? Zio Mao's expression turned into a poker face mim. He glanced at Wei Ji. The girl also carried a new towel and the washed clothes of Zio Mao. She passed them to him. Junior Miao. You forgot your clothes this morning. Go change into these and get my clothes that you are wearing back so I can wash them myself. Oh, Dad. I didn't notice you. Why are you still around? I thought you had gone with the ambulance earlier. Zio Mao. Wei Huang. Chapter 25 Cat Dad is Exhausted. You must not offend Coach Wei Huang. This was the motto of the track and field club, including second year and third year students. As Wei Huang had a similar physique and face as the protagonist of Fist of the North Star, everybody made memes for him and exaggerated the rumor. Everybody in the school spread this for fun at first. A year later, this rumor was accepted as fact, and the students remembered them as an unspoken rule. Although they were rumors, it was not baseless. An angry adult could be terrifying and intimidating, they could not hold a candle when Wei Huang wanted to see some blood when he was young. The old pictures when he had a brawl against others were circulated among students, and the older students used them as a reference to pass on the rumor to the new generations. As a result, students recognized Coach Wei Huang as a dangerous entity that must not be provoked. And now, something interesting had happened. As Wei Huang came to celebrate with Zio Mao, his voice was louder than usual. Every spectating student near the track overheard the conversation. As soon as Wei Ji brought the clothes and chatted with them, the students widened their eyes. Female students let out kia kia noises while the boys were astonished by Zio Mao's courage. This man is ballsy. Is he dating the princess? Busted. He's dead. Omi Wam Shindiru. The spectators got riled up as they loved scandals and dramas. They brought out their phones and filmed Zio Mao, Wei Huang, and Wei Ji. Meanwhile, 
Xiao Mao blankly looked at his clothes in Wei Ji's arms. He turned to Wei Huang next and inspected the latter's face. It was dark and scary. Xiao Mao averted his eyes and looked at Wei Ji. Could you be careful with your words and timing, Munya? Please tell your father what really happened, Munya. Wei Ji widened her eyes and dropped her jaw. Being enlightened, she nodded and looked at her father. Don't misunderstand, father. Nothing happened between us. Really. The dark expression of Wei Huang softened. This morning, I invited him to the girls' locker room and asked him to take off his clothes. Wei Wang's eyes were round. Xiao Mao face palmed. And the spectators went nuts. Some of them had already passed on popcorn to their friends. He wetted his uniform, so I cleaned them and allowed him to use my spare clothes for the time being. Hmm. Xiao Mao and Wei Wang's expressions darkened again. The former wondered whether this girl intentionally used vague vocabulary or she was simply dull. As for Wei Huang, he narrowed his eyes while his killing intent soared. Unfortunately, as Wei Ji talked, her arms and hands slipped. The jacket fell to the ground along with the boxer underwear. The boxer underwear, which Wei Ji had been hiding, was now in plain sight. Wei Huang and Xiao Mao glanced at the underwear. Both men's pupils became dull. Again, the crowd cheered and screamed as if they were cheering for their favorite soccer teams in a match. Wei Ji also looked at the boxer. She picked it up and dryly laughed. I'm so sorry, Miao Xiao Mao. I guess I have to wash your underwear again. Once more, the crowd laughed and jeered. They were watching each other underwear? Did they reach that state? These teenagers were interested in relationships. They were excited as if they were in Xiao Mao and Wei Ji's shoes, especially the school girls. The coach took a deep breath and smiled, but his hand already seized Xiao Mao's nape. His big and rough hand squeezed the neck. But Xiao Mao's neck muscle was firmer than Wei Huang had imagined. He couldn't squeeze it. While seizing the nape of Xiao Mao, Wei Huang confirmed the detail. Did you guys do anything else in the locker room? Wei Ji pouted, of course not. No snake in the hole? No up and down or hump and pump activities? What are those? Is that some kind of workout routine? Xiao Mao's face lost all color. This girl was too innocent, and her wordings were terrible. Fortunately, Wei Ji was not stupid enough to overlook the situation. She realized her mistakes a few seconds later. Wei Ji's face reddened in embarrassment. She yelled. Father, I'm old enough. We dot did dot not dot have dot sex. The crowd was greatly disappointed. They mumbled and turned around, leaving the premise and resuming what they were doing previously. Everyone forgot about Xiao Mao, who had broken the world record for a two kilometers run. Wei Wang's killing intent subsided, and he let go of his hand. He patted Xiao Mao's back. Suddenly, Wei Huang seized Xiao Mao's shoulders and forced him to look straight at his scary hardened face. Remember this, little ape. You touch my daughter again, you die. Understood. Why yes, Munya. But if you insist on dating my daughter, you must join my track club and train under me. Once you earn at least one gold medal from the Olympics, you will have the qualification to date her. How about it? Xiao Mao's eyes turned into small dots. He instantly answered with a blank face. No, thank you. What? Wei Wang's face reddened in anger again. He grabbed Xiao Mao's shoulders and shook him, What's wrong with my daughter? Don't you like her? All men should like her. Why don't you want her? Uh, what? Check out her slim waist, fine abs, tight thighs, and firm round butt. She's a sexy girl that is perfect to become a mother of a child. See these fine and cute chest side pu-a-a-a. Wei Ji drove her right foot into Wei Wang's butt and smacked his head with a baton, which was commonly used in relay races. Xiao Mao stared at the black baton. He was bewildered by how and where Wei Ji brought that from. 
Wei Ji passed the clothes to Xiao Mao. She picked up the underwear and put it on top of the clothes in his arms. Go home for the day. Return my clothes after you washed them, okay? K, Munya. Cool. See you at school. Remember, the bus leaves at 7 a.m. on Sunday. Wei Ji turned around and dragged her father by his ear. They went into the track club room, but nobody knew what might transpire in there afterward. Xiao Mao let out a sigh of relief. At least, he was cleared to join the event, and he didn't need to get involved in any romantic relationship with any woman. He clenched his fist and vowed to himself. I also knew what relationship was like, and I hate it. In this life, I've become a virgin again, and I won't give it to anyone. I'll take my virginity to the grave. Xiao Mao went to the cafeteria to get finished dinner and go to work at Qin Yun's convenience store. Meanwhile, the male runners on the track had already stopped running. They blankly stared at Wei Ji, Wei Huang, and Xiao Mao. Do we still have to run? Midnight. Xiao Mao came home after going through a long and tiring day. He had told Qin Yun that he would take a break tomorrow to rest early as he had to join a half marathon race on Sunday. Fortunately, Qin Yun was an understanding man, and he allowed it. Now, Xiao Mao secured tomorrow's gaming time. I only need to attend the morning classes tomorrow. The afternoon is freed for sportsmen and club activities, so I can use that time to game and sleep. Xiao Mao set his goal while he fed his cats. He looked at Mama Cat, Nianko, Muniang, and Mir, who ignored their food bowls and ate the pieces of fish, wet cat food, and hard cat food from the other cats' bowls. They climbed and stepped on their family members to eat as quickly as possible before they turned around to fight for another plate. He recorded a clip of their behavior and laughed. Once the kitties finished their food, they turned to Xiao Mao and meowed for more. Xiao Mao gave each of them another full bowl worth of dry cat food and went to take a bath. After the bath, he returned to his room for another session of all-night gaming. He yawned and clicked his tongue. What was the required VIT so I don't need to sleep again? 200? I need that power to game all night without getting too sleepy. It's so tiring today. Xiao Mao entered the capsule and started the game but he almost fell asleep before he could properly start the device. Whoosh! The catapus reappeared on the deserted island once again. Munya! The breezing wind and sound of sea waves soothed Xiao Mao after the long troublesome day. He stretched his tentacles and yawned. The weather was so nice. I'm so sleepy. I feel like I haven't slept enough. Xiao Mao looked at the shore where he had left items there for Slave 1 to pick up. The items were no longer there. Ding! Xiao Mao nodded in approval. His slave was working hard. Because his slave had been working hard, the master needed to work harder, too. Because of this motivation, Xiao Mao picked a place under a palm tree and curled, taking a short nap. Ding! You have been blessed with the power of unyielding spirit. The effect lasts one hour. Xiao Mao woke up because of the high-pitched noise of the system notifications. He yelled to the sky. Shadap, Munya. He sat up and lifted his tentacle as if he wanted to open a capsule hatch. However, he found himself grasping air. Xiao Mao blinked several times and looked around. Oh, I'm in the game. Did I just sleep in the game? Although he had played the game a lot in his previous life, he never slept in the game as it increased his electric bills. To save some money, he'd rather sleep normally. Xiao Mao looked at the clock. Only an hour had passed since he had logged into the game. Feeling refreshed, Xiao Mao dashed toward the Knoll Cave. Upon arriving at the dungeon, he stopped and opened his premium inventory to grab some fish. Before the grinding, he increased the protein from fish's mastery first. After an hour, Xiao Mao ate 400 raw blue rarity fishes, and the game system prompted him with notification messages. Ding! Congratulations! Your mastery of protein from fish add-on skill has reached 10%. Dot. 
Congratulations! Your mastery of fish gourmet skill has reached 10%. Dot. Zio Mao clenched the tip of his tentacle hand as if he clenched his fist. He grabbed fish that could increase his status points and ate them right away. Chapter 26 Cat Dad's Title Level, 10 EXP, 460,000 slash 700,000 Contribution Level, 1 Packed Weekly Income, 1 slash 100 EXP, 10 slash 160 comma 000 Status Attributes STR, 60, plus 30 DEX, 60 plus 30. AGI, 60, plus 30. VIT, 60, plus 30. INT, 60, plus 30. WIS, 60, plus 30. Allocable status points, 250. Unyielding spirit. During the blessing period, your max HP and MP increase by 10%. Your def increases by 10. All your spiritual roots increase by 10. After boosting all his attributes to 60, Zio Mao glanced at his catnap blessing. It was still weak as the skill mastery was too low. Also, the spiritual roots were useless for Zio Mao at the moment as he hadn't learned any spell yet. Zio Mao ate more fish until it reached today's cap. The mastery of protein from fish and fish gourmet rose to 11%. It got harder to increase the mastery percentage. At this rate, it would take about 3 days and 1,800 fish to reach the next milestone. I have 2 days left to exploit the 3-day buff. I need to increase my level as high as possible until then. If possible, I want to kill the Noel boss and secure the dungeon core for that item. Zio Mao brandished his cleaver and rushed into the cave. 10 seconds later, Zio Mao ran into the group of 10 gnolls, which consisted of 9 dirty gnolls and 1 elite gnoll. Zio Mao didn't hide this time. He menacingly stared at them and meowed. Muni a a a a. His cute voice echoed in the cave, causing the gnolls to stop patrolling. They looked around in confusion for a moment before one of them spotted Zio Mao. Growl. They roared and charged toward the dungeon entrance. One of them pounced on the small catapus. Zio Mao brought out a rock from his inventory and threw it into the large mouth of the knoll. The rock whizzed in the air and smashed the front teeth. The first knoll whimpered and fell to the ground before it could reach Zio Mao. A big red number, 55, floated on its head, and its HP bar decreased by 16%. Zio Mao hopped backward as he had no time to finish off the injured knoll. The elite monster stomped at its comrade and swung down its club. Dong! A walk appeared out of nowhere, and its smooth round bottom deflected the club. A red number, one, floated out from Zio Mao's head. Shield Bash, Munya. Although Zio Mao had no such skill, he replicated the basic skill that most warriors could use. With 90 STR, Zio Mao's strength surpassed the elite knoll who had the same stats as uncommon NFT character level 30. It bashed the large hyena man backward and collided with other rushing gnolls. The formation of the monsters crumbled. Six of ten fell on their butts, but four avoided the collision and flanked Zio Mao to the sides. Using the same attack pattern, the four gnolls pounced at him at the same time. Kiting the monsters, Zio Mao leaped backward. Boom! The four gnolls hit nothing, but they bashed each other. Four numbers, one, appeared on their heads as they inflicted friendly fire damage on their friends. Zio Mao put the walk shield back into his inventory and hopped on the top of the nearest knoll, who was still stunned by the crash. Like a butcher, he hacked at a dog man's neck. SWUA 150 The increase in STR and DEX began to show results. Although the attack was not a critical strike, it was enough to decrease the level 22 Dirty Knoll's HP bar by half. Zio Mao glanced at the red number. He clicked his tongue in frustration. The level gap penalty is still applying to me. Unless I'm level 13, I can't insta-kill these guys with normal attacks. 
As Sio Mao and the Knowles level difference was more than 10, a damage reduction penalty was applied to all Sio Mao's attacks on the Knowles. At first, Sio Mao's attack dealt 50 to 70 damage or 190 ish critical damage whenever he hit their vital organs. But now, a Gray's attack dealt 55 points while a vital strike inflicted 150. The progress was there, but it wasn't enough. Zio Mao stopped daydreaming and hacked at the nape of the knoll one more time. Critical hit. 420. The second strike beheaded the knoll, and the monster slowly dissipated into dust on the spot. Zio Mao jumped back again, kiting the other nine knolls that had recovered from the confusion. The elite knoll rushed in front. Zio Mao brought out the walk shield and deflected the club attack. Dong. One damage. Shield bash, Munya. Again, Zio Mao repeated his previous actions. He pushed the elite knoll to collide with the other pursuing knolls. Two managed to dodge the collision. They flanked Zio Mao and pounced on him at the same time. He hopped backward. Boom. They headbutted each other and got stunned. Once more, Zio Mao hopped on one of them and swung his cleaver. Critical hit. 420. He killed it in one swing this time. Growl. Hearing the barks and the roars, Zio Mao leaped away from the group, avoiding getting cornered. However, he had already gotten out of the cave. Noticing that he was on the open field, Zio Mao turned around and ran toward the nearest tree. The elite knoll relentlessly chased while the others followed after their leader. Zio Mao hopped and climbed the five meter tall oak which stood out among the other trees in the forest. The elite knoll leaped up and grabbed a large branch while it held a club in his other hand. He barked and climbed the trees with one hand and two feet. Zio Mao suddenly turned around and dropped onto the elite's face. And he inked the monster. Poo! Blank ink got into the elite knoll's eyes, and its hand slipped off the branch. Together with Zio Mao, they fell from the oak tree. But Zio Mao put the cleaver below him, aligning the sharp part 90 degrees to the ground and sitting on top of the blunt edge, pointing at the head of the elite monster. P.O.E.K. The gravity pulled them back to earth, and the cleaver sunk into the elite monster's face. The sound of a machete hitting a coconut was similar to the noise that the cleaver and the knoll's skull produced. 55. The elite knoll's HP bar slightly decreased by a tiny amount. Zio Mao glanced at it and estimated that its HP surpassed four digits in number. Damn level penalty. It should have been at least 150. Zio Mao cursed at the game's mechanic while he yanked out the cleaver from the knoll's head. As the knoll was laying on its back, Zio Mao noticed a golden opportunity. He hopped toward the lower part of the knoll. As the knoll only wore light leather armor that lightly protected its heart and chest, the parts below were unprotected. Zio Mao's eyes shone as his tentacles held the cleaver like a baseball bat. He swung it horizontally, aiming at the baseballs. SWUA. The balls were lopped and sent to the sky. Red blood splattered and gushed like a foundation while the elite Noel shrieked in pain. Double critical. 900. That was a big number. Moreover, the elite Noel's HP bar was decreased by 90% in one hit. At even Zio Mao was surprised that the damage was too high. He stared at the HP bar of the knoll in disbelief. How, Munya? Although distracted, Zio Mao followed up with a downward chop and cut the groin of the dog man, expanding the wound. Double critical. 900. The elite knoll rolled its eyes upward and stopped moving. It dissipated into ashes. Seeing that its captain had been slain, the other gnolls also shrieked in fright and withdrew into the cave with their tails tucking in between their legs. Ding! Elite monsters usually rewarded players three to five times the normal amount of EXP upon death. Killing dungeon monsters added multipliers to the rewards as well. Ding! As expected, it was enough for Zio Mao to reach level 11. However, he was not interested in levels at the moment. He sorted the newest items to appear first on the list. And the new looted items were highlighted. 
Fine Noel Fangs X6. Fine Noel Hides X2. Fine Noel Meat X8. Clubber Card, Gold Named, X1. Leather Armor of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Boots of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Gloves of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Club of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Leather Pants of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Leather Helmet of Hyene, Gold Named, X1. Unidentified Black Stone, Red Named, X1. The entire Hyene set dropped from the Elite Knoll, but Zio Mao only scoffed at them since he couldn't use human gears. Zio Mao put the clubber card in his encyclopedia book. There were still eight Knoll monster cards in this area that Zio Mao needed to trigger a collector's bonus, but he couldn't do it at the moment. He checked his favorite item with a red name, which he had sold to Otto for 500k gold coins. Niahahaha. You can't steal the quest item from me, Munya. Because of the elation and joy, Zio Mao forgot to check a hidden detail of his game character. There was a title detail, which had appeared under his general status detail. Name, Zio Mao. Rarity, Ultra Rare. Race, Catapus, Evolvable. Job, Slave Master, Evolvable. Unique Skills, Enslavement, 0%, Slave Training, 0%. Racial skills, fish gourmet, 11%, catnap, 2%. Max. Add-on skill, protein from fish, 11%. Title, nutcracker, unique. Nutcracker, unique. Complete these conditions to unlock. Synchronization rate 10%. While you are in the real world, hit two people to the nuts and crack their testicles. Effects, upon hitting the golden balls of players or monsters, inflict double damage to the targeted enemy, s. Inflict fear to all male enemies within a radius of 10 meters for 10 seconds. Chapter 27 Cat Dad and Pirates After the first elite Noel was dead, Xiaomao rushed back to the cave to find more prey. Unlike the previous attempts, the first patrol unit of Noel's was no longer there. The subordinates of the elites had retreated. After walking 50 meters into the cave, Zio Mao hid behind a boulder and waited for the second unit to patrol this area. It didn't take long before the second unit arrived. This unit always quarreled with the first group. They proceeded to this area, and they kept on marching toward the cave entrance. Zio Mao peeked at them and counted their number. 17. This group consisted of one elite monster and 16 minions. Moreover, the subordinates of the previous destroyed unit merged with this party. Figured. Leaving the minions alive always leads to this. Now, this unit will patrol this area until the dead elite monster is resp owned. In an hour, the dead elite will come out with 18 new minions and one extra elite monster, and those deserters will rejoin the first unit. This was the scary mechanic of the dungeon that scared solo players the more they hunted elite monsters, the more difficult the dungeon. They would keep multiplying until the players couldn't defeat all of them anymore. However, Zio Mao had a different goal in mind. These two units will be my grinding spot for today. Tomorrow onward, they will be the wardens of the dungeon. It has been a day after that stupid announcement, so explorers and top guilds must have already deployed their men to search for the new dungeon. Whenever the game globally announced that an anonymous dungeon had appeared, top gaming guilds always dispatched their people to occupy it as their territory. This Noel dungeon was no exception. Regardless of how secrecy it was, someone would eventually find it. And if they managed to find it today or tomorrow, Zio Mao's grinding routine would be hindered by the influx of players. I'll hunt down these two groups and multiply their numbers to 1000. Heck, I doubt they will have the guts to challenge hordes after hordes of humanoid gnolls in a narrow cave. They're going to feel like they are waging war against Spartans instead of raiding a dungeon. Oh, right. Concentrate, brain. Zio Mao shook off the useless thoughts and observed the second patrol unit. The patrol unit reached the entrance of the dungeon. 
They suddenly stopped as their captain walked out of the cave and sprayed his pee on nearby rocks, marking his new territory. The minions didn't follow their captain. They stopped moving in formation and wandered independently. Some of them went sniffing the former area of the first squad. The deserters strolled back to the second squad's territory to explore while the rest of them lazily rested near the cave entrance. Xiaomao had been waiting for this opportunity. Every time a unit from another designated spawn point wandered to other areas other than their turf, they often stopped moving in groups and dispersed. Until the elite monster returned, the rest of his minions always patrolled randomly. Xiaomao got out of the cover and dashed toward the group of five gnolls, which revealed their backs to him. The catapus hopped on one of them and hacked its nape with the cleaver. Critical hit. 420. Looking at the number, Zio Mao had the urge to make some joints for his old time's sake. Unfortunately, as a catapus, he was no longer suited for smoking. One down, four to go. The four gnolls noticed Zio Mao. They bore fangs and lunged at him, using the only attack they had. Zio Mao slid under one of them. He raised his cleaver and cut the hanging thing between their legs. Double critical. The knoll whimpered and cried before it dissipated into nothingness. The three remaining knolls instinctively covered their crotches and ran away in all directions. Zio Mao broke a sweat, looking at the fleeing knolls. Munya? Why are you fleeing? Come back, Munya. Without the elite knoll watching over his crews, Zio Mao clipped them one by one. In ten minutes, all minions of the elite knoll were castrated to the last man. Zio Mao got the hang of hunting with this small body. Although it was inconvenient in many ways, the hitbox of his body was much smaller than a human body. He could utilize this character like an assassin. I'm Agent 47, Munya. While Zio Mao was elated, the elite Noel walked back to the cave as he finished the exploration and marking. Zio Mao went back to hiding, waiting for an opportunity to strike. But suddenly, the game system warned him. Zio Mao frowned. He had forgotten about the durability of his newbie weapon. He had been using it for several hours in the fight yesterday. Today, he also used it to kill over a dozen gnolls. Zio Mao opened his game menu to check the status of his equipment. Fuyo Cleaver, Uncommon. Item Type, Cooking Utensil, Weapon. Effect, Increase ATK by 10. Requirement, 15 STR. Durability, 10 100. It was on the verge of being broken, but it was enough to handle the elite knoll in front of him. I'll kill this guy and return to the city. It's about time I put all my set equipment to the auction house and get back some packs. Growl. The elite seemed to notice the anomaly as its minions were gone. It looked around in caution, searching for the intruder. As Zio Mao hadn't coated himself in a knoll's dung, the monster noticed his whereabouts right away. The elite knoll raised its club and charged at Zio Mao. Zio Mao shook his head and sighed. He got out of the cover and countercharged the oncoming monster. Ta 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 ta. The sound of the boat's magic engine and the sound of sea waves were the only things that slave one could hear. The supporter of Zio Mao expressionlessly stood in front of his ship console navigating his fishing ship east, heading back to his master. The sea's tides were big and small, and he sensed that his ship might not be suitable to explore the high sea. Yet, Slave One persisted and kept moving east, rushing back to his waypoint destination. Zaaa! Five hundred meters behind the fishing boat, a cog followed Slave One. The skull image on its black flag clearly indicated that it was a pirate ship. Five red-named players grinned as they looked at Slave One via their telescopes. One of them loaded their musket and got ready for the raid. The captain of the ship was the musketeer. His red name C.A.I. Zhong stood out among the dark red-named comrades. He also had the title of Coastal Pirate, which enabled him to loot more items from dead players, NPCs, or monsters. C.A.I. Zhong aimed at Slave One to practice aiming. But suddenly, he had a second thought. Meh, it's a supporting character. 
Instead of sinking that ship, let's follow it and find its master. The crews looked at their boss in confusion, but boss. We have been trailing that fishing boat for a while now. Shouldn't we at least kill the supporter and steal his items? In this game, characters with red names were criminals. Players always hunted them for contribution points or their items in inventory. But in exchange for being a criminal, they gained bonus drop rates from killing monsters. And if they killed enough monsters, their criminal status would eventually disappear. But for C.A.I. Zhong, who was using this pirate as an alt character, he didn't care about criminal records or red named status. He only did it for fun and sea exploration. We can kill that idiot any time we want. But since he's heading elsewhere other than the nearest seaside town, let's stalk him and find out what he is doing. Maybe, he can lead us to a secret farming spot that we didn't know. One of the crewmates agreed, not many guilds are exploring the sea since it is costly to build a carrack or a high sea ship. We might actually become the Columbus if we accidentally stumble upon an unknown continent or island. Ha ha ha. Dream on. We have been hunting transport ships along the coast for a month, but we haven't found an island on the high sea. Maybe we haven't left the coast for too far. Come to think of it, Captain. I don't think we have ever come to the high sea this deep. The crews looked at the sky and the dark cloud at a distance. They shivered at the thought of running into the storm in high tides. Eh anyway. Let's follow that fool, C.A.I. Zhong changed the subject and ordered his men to follow Slave 1. Chapter 28 Cat Dad's Trap The fishing ship of Slave 1 came to a forest island. The fisher parked the boat at the abandoned port and went toward the designated site, where Zio Mao had ordered him to. Slave 1 got on the rundown port and went to the entrance of the forest. While staring blankly at the forest, he unloaded all common fish in his inventory to the ground. This was the fifth time that he offered tribute to this forest. It was a part of Zio Mao's instructions. These fishes didn't give bonus attributes. However, Zio Mao ordered Slave 1 to offer fish here every time he passed by this island. Slave 1 finished his job and walked away. He stood on the port idly for five minutes. Rumble. He didn't get to see what happened to the entrance of the forest, but the fish was already gone. Ding. Slave 1 stared blankly at the system notification panels. Again, his pupils flickered. Ding. Slave 1 slightly nodded. He faintly smiled and gazed at the sea, waiting for something to appear. As Slave 1 waited there as Zio Mao had ordered him, the corner of his eyes found the approaching cog with a black pirate flag. His dull eyes flickered as one of the conditions that Zio Mao had programmed him triggered. He walked back to the fishing boat and got back on. Then, he sailed the ship further east, heading toward the calm sea area. Several minutes after Slave 1 had left, the pirates reached the forest island. The five men with red names got down from the ship and laughed. It's a new discovery. A new continent. We're the pioneers. Although the forest island was roughly five square kilometers in size, they called it a continent. C.A.I. Zhong gazed at the forest and smirked. Forget that bot. We would have gotten nothing but useless fish from him anyway. Let's explore this forest and search for treasures and hidden dungeons. For your treasures. New dungeon. For one piece. The gang cheered and brought out their gears to hunt some monsters. As soon as they armed themselves, their red names glittered and their levels were displayed. C.A.I. Zhong, level 55. Yar Hamster, level 50. Yar Rat, level 50. Yar Mouse, level 50. Yar Rodent, level 50. Aside from C.A.I. Zhong, whose NFT character was rare grade, the other pirate crews were using a common grade NFT character, and their level limit was 50. A level 50 common NFT character had 250 to 260 total status points on average, depending on their achievements and titles. Meanwhile, a rare NFT player like C.A.I. Zhong had a better prospect and potential. His total stats now reached 900 points, 
including bonuses from his equipment and titles. In addition, his musket and equipment increased a lot of def and ATK, which gave him an edge over low-level super-rare and ultra-rare NFT players, who couldn't equip better gears. CAI Zhong led the team toward the forest. But as soon as they stepped into the forest, they ran into a gigantic 200-meter-long white crocodile with a scar on its face, whose jaws was larger than the pirate's combined body mass. The dinosaur had been crewing fishes and sunbathing there, but the presence of five pirates annoyed him. Sir Nun was its unique name. Its dark purple name was in clear view. Yet, its level was shown as. The question marks only appeared when the monster's level was at least 50 levels higher than the player's. In addition, the purple named monster belonged to world bosses. World bosses usually had five times the amount of status points as an ultra rare NFT character at the same level, and their HP was multiplied by 1000. Moreover, four question marks indicated that the monster's level was in four digits. It was not something that they could tackle head on without an army and late game gears. Moreover, 10,000 small colorful lights hovered around Sir Nun. Yet, every bubble of light displayed red names. World Tree Fairy, Level They were comrades of Sir Nun. Anyone that attacked him would become hostile to the fairies. They were the army of a world boss. What the hell? Sir Nun's large eyes fixated on the guests. His feet, which were several times bigger than an adult human, kicked the ground. He opened his mouth and snapped on them. Chomp! None of them could see the number of damage they had taken. However, they briefly saw six big digits of damage before their vision turned black. Meanwhile, Zio Mao had been waiting on an abandoned port on the Knoll Islands beach. He gazed toward the west, where another dangerous place was located. It was the place that Zio Mao had chosen as a dummy waypoint. He programmed Slave One's personality that he would always lead pursuers to that island before coming back to the Knoll Island. He thought to himself. I wonder how many coastal pirates will follow my slave's ship to Sir Nun's nest. In his previous life, Sir Nun was a world boss and the guardian of the northern seaside island chain. He usually rested at the largest island west of Knoll Island. Sir Nun was not a dangerous beast, who attacked everyone on sight. On the contrary, it protected the island chain and warded off all pirates and outlaws in the area. Zio Mao remembered its name well as Sir Nun played a big role in one of the tragic main scenario quests. At that time, Sir Nun was the key NPC who mobilized his sea army to fight against Pangu faction's players and destroyed Seaside Town. His soldiers captured so many coastal towns and cities, turning the sea into a hostile area for Pangu faction's players. But strangely, Sir Nun captured local NPCs and let them go later on. He only killed players who resisted, but he didn't kill a single NPC. Nobody pointed out the major clue until it was too late. As the guild, who was responsible for the main scenario quest, refused to share the quest content with the public, nobody learned about the background of this event and treated it as a monster raid event. Thus, the players thought that Sir Nun was just another monster. Criminals and outlaws flocked to his island to join him mistaking Sir Nun for someone from the Chaos Demon Gods faction. However, Sir Nun killed them on sight. This enraged Chaos Demon Gods worshippers. Both factions waged war against Sir Nun and were blinded by the greed for contribution EXP and achievements. After five months of bitter war, players of the Pangu faction vanquished Sir Nun and conquered his island chain, only to discover the sad truth that the questers had never shared with the public. Sir Nun, who everybody thought to be the bad guy, had been trying to restore a destroyed array to protect the mainland from the upcoming tsunami calamity of a prophecy. He tried to save the local NPCs and warned players not to linger around the coastlines, but nobody listened to him. Moreover, the one who had destroyed the protection array was discovered to be an apostle of the Pangu Church. The twist flipped the game lore upside down. People debated if Pangu was the good god or Chaos Demon God was right all along. People began switching sides, and Chaos Demon God's faction grew stronger than before. A week later, 
a major tsunami occurred and half of the mainland continent became a part of the sea, triggering more main scenario quests. But that was a story for another time. Xiao Mao thought of the tragic events and sighed. He gazed toward the west, wondering if he could get his hands on the quest instead of selfish guilds and protect Sir Nun from the mysterious conspiracy. I believe you're a good guy, Sir Nun. But for now, please protect me until I'm strong enough to protect you. Ta 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 ta. The fishing boat of Slave One reached Knoll Island. The sound of the engine snapped Xiao Mao out of his fantasy. He hopped on the boat and touched the engine. Ding! All 900 MP of Xiao Mao was depleted instantly, but the battery of the engine increased by 9%. The current battery was only 43%. To charge it to the fullest, Xiao Mao needed 5,700 MP to do so. Recharging the magic battery was troublesome, but it would be easier once Slave One's level was higher. After all, MP gradually restored when they were not in combat. Let's go back to Seaside Town. We need to recharge your boat and check our warehouse. Chapter 29 Cat Dad Slave 1 Xiao Mao inspected the boat. Currently, it was loaded with four wooden barrels of wine and a barrel of iron cannonballs. It seemed that Slave 1 had quite an adventure. After all, these items could only be found on the open sea, where high-leveled sea monsters ran rampant. It was not a place that a fragile fishing boat like this one could challenge, yet Slave 1 got a few goodies from that place. Xiao Mao stored the barrels that Slave 1 couldn't store in his inventory. He also took a note that he needed to expand the latter's inventory slots to the max as well. Currently, Slave 1 only had 10 slots to work with, which wasn't good in the long run as he needed to extensively fish in the sea. I forgot to buy more packs and expand his inventory slots. Well, the promotion discount is still there. I can log out and settle this quick. Xiao Mao looked at Slave 1. Wait here. I'll be right back real quick, Munya. Xiao Mao logged out. Xiao Mao's room. Xiao Mao pushed the hatch open and rushed to open his laptop computer. Fortunately, Xiao Mao had deposited the 10,000 RMB that he had extorted from Liu Bei to the bank, and he could use his debit card to purchase crypto tokens. Without hesitation, he converted them into 32,000 packs and transferred them to his game account. After stocking up his game tokens, Xiao Mao turned off the laptop and hopped back into his capsule. He closed the game hatch and entered the game. Creek. Munya. Muniang climbed the doorknob and opened the door. Mama Cat, Nianko, Mir, and Muniang rushed into Xiao Mao's room. Nianko kicked the door with her hind leg to close it. Then, they gazed at the game capsule. Muniang tilted his head. Munya? Unfortunately, Xiao Mao didn't notice him. His consciousness entered the game world. Seeing that Xiao Mao was not on the bed, Nianko jumped on the former's pillow. Then, she squatted and unleashed her yellowish fluid. The smell would stick for a long time. As soon as Xiao Mao came back, he spent 6,300 packs to purchase the inventory slot expansion packages. Then, he unlocked 90 extra inventory slots for Slave 1 to use. Now, Slave 1 wouldn't have to store baggage and extra items on his boat. While looking at Slave 1 operating the fishing boat, Xiao Mao inspected his supporter's progress. Name, Slave 1. Race, Human, Evolvable. Job, Fisherman, Evolvable. Unique Skill, Fishing Spot Finder. Racial Skill. Current Order, Head Back to Seaside Town's Labor Guild. Level, 21 slash 50. EXP. 80,225 slash 148,617 Status Attributes STR, 8 DEX, 8 AGI, 8 VIT, 8 INT, 6 WIS, 8 Allocable Status Points, 100 Spiritual Roots Fire, 7 Water, 17. 
Wind, 7. Metal, 7. Wood, 17. Lightning, 7. Darkness, 7. Light, 7. Allocable status points, 105. Combat status. ATK, 4. Def, 4. HP, 80 slash 80. MP, 30 slash 30, minus 50. Xiaomao nodded in satisfaction. It seemed that the relationship between Slave 1 and Sir Nun was good as it showed in his status attributes. Slave 1. How many times did you offer tributes to Sir Nun, Munya? The fisherman turned around and showed ten fingers. Ten, Munya. Slave 1 nodded. How many times did you get the blessing, Munya? Slave 1 showed Xiaomao six fingers. Xiaomao was happy for him. It was not bad for a new character to succeed 6 out of 10 tries. He checked the relationship tab of Slave 1 to see how many NPCs or monsters had a favorable impression of him. The number was staggering high. Over 5,000 World Tree Fairies loved this guy. But there were two names that interested Zio Mao. Sir Nun, Favorability 4 stars. Magdalene, Contracted Familiar Favorability 5 stars. Judging from the detail, Slave 1 had formed a bond with one of the fairies on that island. Xiaomao was proud of him. That explained how his spiritual roots increased while his max MP was penalized. Well done, Munya. You've been working hard, Munya. Slave 1 faintly smiled as if he was elated. He turned to the console deck and concentrated on steering the boat. Fairies were magical creatures whose specialties were elemental magic. They relied on natural mana to live. But once they formed a contract with someone, they became symbiotic creatures that leached on their master's mana to grow and live. Most fairies lived in dense forests far away from civilizations. They always gathered around friendly world bosses, world trees, or hidden flower fields. Any player that came across them usually found them distasteful as they always pranked visitors. However, if provoked, they sometimes attacked players. Several actions, such as stepping on their favorite flowers, harming their home, cutting trees, or attacking their friends, were the same as a death sentence to the reckless players. And when they wanted someone dead, they showed no mercy. Most importantly, fairies were high-leveled habitats of this game world. The weakest among them was at least level 1000 and their stats were comparable to super rare NFT characters at the same level. However, the spiritual roots of the fairies were a hundred times stronger than even UR NFT characters at the same level. No players, guilds, companies, or armies could defeat one of them at the moment. Until the Heavenly Deo patch, which increased level caps of common, uncommon, and rare NFT characters, no one could contest against a fairy. Therefore, getting a fairy as a familiar was a huge achievement. Since Slave 1 did well, Xiaomao rewarded the former by allocating the free points to his necessary stats, which would benefit the fairy. Xiaomao put 50 points to Xiaomao's int while the other 50 went to his WIS. As for spiritual roots, Xiaomao added all points to water. Fishermen must be good with water. After spending all points, Xiaomao admired Slave 1's new stats. Level, 21 slash 50. EXP, 80,225 slash 148,617. Status Attributes. STR, 8. DEX, 8. AGI, 8. VIT, 8. INT, 56. WIS, 58. Allocable Status Points, 0. Spiritual Roots Fire, 7 Water, 123 Wind, 7 Metal, 7 Wood, 17 Lightning, 7 Darkness, 7 Light, 7 Allocable Status Points, 0 Combat Status ATK, 4 Def, 4 HP, 
80 slash 80 MP 30 slash 530 minus 50 having 500 additional max MP was huge now slave one could refuel his boats magic engine on his own while he was in the middle of the sea furthermore having more mana benefited the contracted fairy now the fairy would exchange slave one's max mana to grow stronger and once she grew stronger Slave once would obtain various blessings to his permanent status points and spiritual roots. Ding! Here we go, Munya. This was also Zio Mao's second aim. By focusing on increasing one spiritual root attribute to over 100, Slave One was now eligible to learn water magic. Zio Mao had allocated 50 free status points to Slave One's int for this reason. Now, he could protect himself in the middle of the sea where water mana was abundant. Awaken his water attribute. Ding! Zio Mao proudly smiled while Slave One raised his eyebrows as he felt the changes. I didn't lie when I said I would make you the king of fishermen. Hell, you're on the highway to become fisher god. Now, I can sit back and watch you grow by yourself. Let the chain reaction and snowball effect begin. Slave One held his stomach. The sense of having a mass of water moving up and down the body made Slave One uncomfortable. His bowel contracted while his stomach churned. The nauseous, dizziness, and the urge to take a big dump troubled Slave One. Ding! Magdalene wants to absorb some of your mana. In exchange, she will strengthen you. Slave One blankly stared at the notification panel without saying anything. Ding! Slave One secretly clenched his fist. His pupils fluctuated in excitement. Zio Mao and Slave One returned to Seaside Town's Labor Guild. They went to their room and opened their premium warehouse and stored. Looking at the warehouse, Zio Mao drooled. About 800 blue rarity fish, crabs, and shrimps were stored there. As for the rest, they were glass bottles with notes inside, barrels of gunpowder, barrels of wine barrels of iron cannonballs, and 100 boots of hyene. Zio Mao collected all stackable fish, crabs, and shrimp to his premium inventory as he needed to eat them every day. He also inspected the glass bottles. Each glass bottle contained a cryptic message, which gave a random treasure hunting quest to the player that found it. However, the quests from bottles were complicated and required an advanced ship for exploring the high sea, where Slave One had found the barrels of goodies. But that wasn't a distant future project anymore. Zio Mao could always go for the P2W path by exchanging his packs for gold coins. Zio Mao put the sellable equipment in his inventory and Slave One's inventory. While he was at it, he sized up the supporter. It would have been a waste to sell the two sets of rare equipment when Slave One could use them. Slave One, put these on, Munya. Chapter 30 Cat Dad Wants Big Ship Slave One put the hyene set. The helmet was made of knoll skull and leather while the leather gloves, armor, pants, and boots were made from hardened knoll hides. After putting them on and wielding the club, Slave One looked like a barbarian chieftain. Moreover, by completing the set, Slave One emitted a green aura around him. He now looked dazzling. Even Slave One was proud of his aura. His nostril flared, and his face blushed a little. Moreover, the combat prowess of Slave One surpassed Zio Mao. Combat Status ATK, 9 plus 50 Def, 9 plus 150 M. ATK, 46 M. Def, 34 HP, 380 slash 380, plus 200 MP 530 slash 530, minus 150. Having a completed set of gears impacted the attack and defense. This was the difference between a fully equipped level 20 character and a low leveled naked character like Zio Mao. Judging from the raw stats, Slave One could potentially solo the Noel dungeon now. Still, Zio Mao wasn't envious of Slave One. He knew that Kato Pusses had their unique equipment which rivaled rare set gears. Let's go shopping, Munya. After sorting items, 
Zio Mao rode on Slave One's shoulder and ordered him to march toward Seaside Town's Merchant Guild. As Slave One obediently followed Zio Mao's instruction, he walked at his own pace, heading to the destination. Slave One left the Labor Guild and entered the town. Then, his gear's aura shone under the sunlight like a halo. The bright green color attracted everybody's gazes. As the players looked at his leather gears, which stood out among the newbie players, they couldn't help but admire the unique pattern and the tribal-like skull helmet. Even several level 50 common NFT players were attracted to the unique aura of the set equipment. Although Slave One looked good in public, players lost interest in him shortly after. After all, they got used to the fashion aesthetic of other players, who had purchased cosmetic gear from the cash shop. Everybody believed that Slave One was one of the cash players, who used cosmetic gears to hide his real gears. Fools, Munya. Zio Mao laughed at them. He wondered how many players could understand the value of set gears. Equipment was categorized in levels and rarity tiers. In the early stages, level 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 were the milestones for gear progression as the equipment's effects significantly improved by a rank. A level 1 gear gave players 5 to 10 ATK or 5 to 10 DEF at the maximum. Level 10 differed by a little as the value increased by 5. At level 20, the value began to scale. It ranged between 20 and 100, depending on the rarity of the gears, assuming that the equipment had gold, purple, or red names. Lower rarity equipment gave lower stats accordingly. At level 40, the ATK and DEF scale spiked to 100 to 200 per piece, which was several times the amount that level 20 equipment provided. Then, at level 60, the max value of ATK and DEF jumped to 200 to 500 from one piece of equipment or weapon. Level 80 500 to 1000. Level 100 1000 to 2000 per piece. The power curve seemed ridiculous, but these gears were essential for a higher stage in game when cultivators and chi came into play. Having 1000 to 2000 def at level 100 was considered paper thin as normal monsters and NPCs at level 100 could easily one shot them. Meanwhile, the level 20 set of Slave 1 was stronger than level 40 white named gears that common NFT players used. With the additional stats from Fairy's bonuses and Sir Nun's blessings, Slave 1 was comparable to average level 50 players with a common NFT character. He was strong enough to roam around this starting town. Slave 1 entered the town's merchant guild unhindered. Zio Mao jumped off from his supporter's shoulder and went to one of the counters to submit his business. The counter clerk glanced at the premium merchant guild's pass icon above Zio Mao's head. She then wildly smiled at the cat. What can I do for you today, sir? I'm looking for a galleon for sale, Munya. Do you have any ocean sea ship for sale, Munya? Please wait for a moment. We shall check the commissions and our records. The clerk rushed off from the counter and went back into the staff room upstairs. Five minutes later, she returned and guided the guild branch manager here. The obese man in a red noble medieval clothing was Tang Yuan. His fluffy cloth collars and his massive neck looked uncomfortable under that uniform as sweat rained from his face and his skin, drenching the clothes. Hello, sir. I am Tang Yuan, the branch manager of Merchant Guild. Before we talk business, I would like to check your credibility, sir. Please forgive us if we ask something rude. What is it, Munya? Ocean ships are costly and we need to verify if your wealth is sufficient to purchase such expensive goods. In short, Tang Yuan didn't believe that Zio Mao had enough money to buy expensive warships. I see, Munya. Zio Mao nodded as he understood what Tang Yuan wanted. He hadn't opened a bank account with the Merchant Guild yet, so he couldn't access the Guild's VIP products. Without hesitation, Zio Mao converted 10,000 packs into packed coins. He filled them into an empty barrel and brought them out in front of the counter. The barrel manifested and let out a jiggling sound. One packed is one million gold coins. Will ten thousand packed coins be enough to warranty my credibility, Munya? 
Seeing the number of tokens, Tang Yuan's eyes glittered while the clerk brightly smiled. They bowed 90 degrees. Welcome to Merchant Guild, esteemed sir. Please come to the upper floor meeting room. Xiao Mao collected the barrel of tokens back and ordered Slave One to follow Tang Yuan to the meeting room on the second floor. Their actions didn't escape the eyes of other players. Many merchants and traders gazed at Xiao Mao in envy. Still, they didn't cause a commotion as they were used to seeing rich players. They gossiped among themselves. Another P2W whale joining the game. Even his character is you are, man. Don't complain. His money is supporting the game for F2P players like us to enjoy. He must be rich in real life. Why does he want to buy a warship anyway? All sea monsters are level 500 and above. They are not something we can fight. Sea trades, you noob. Sea trade is a lucrative business. Top guilds have at least one or two carracks for sea trade. But not a galleon, though. Do you know how many billion gold coins it costs? It also takes at least two or three years for the NPC shipbuilders to make one. I doubt anyone can wait that long. The crowd speculated and murmured among themselves. But a few minutes later, they forgot about Xiao Mao's existence and continued with their businesses in the guild building. Guild branch manager's office. Xiao Mao and Slave One sat on a couch. The fat manager brought a catalogue and put it on the coffee table in front of them. Unfortunately, we don't have any pre-made ship in stock at the moment, but we can commission Siren City's best shipyards to construct a brand new ship of your liking. You can check the catalogue and tell me what kind of ship you desire. Siren City was the name of the capital city of the Yuan Empire. It was located far to the southwest of the continent, and it was famous for its shipbuilders and abundant natural resources. Carracks or similar ocean ships were never sold in the market or guilds. To get one, players needed to issue a commission at the local merchant guild and wait for shipbuilders to construct one for them. Xiao Mao had expected this. He leisurely opened the catalog to see the ship designs, specs, and pictures of real ships. After flipping a few pages, Xiao Mao pointed at a massive galleon, which looked exactly like ocean ships in the 16th to 18th centuries. However, the description and specs of the galleon were different than real-world ships. Kraken Hunter, Galleon Class This combat galleon is designed for one purpose hunting sea monsters. It comes with 10 lightning harpoon guns, 10 AA mini guns, and 20 heavy cannons on the top deck. 40 lightning element cannons and 20 auxiliary windows are customizable. All parts of the ships can be upgraded as long as you have enough mithril ores or sacred tree lumbers. Ship Specifications Hull HP, 5 million. Durability, 10 million. Weight Limit, 5000 tons. Max Speed, 10 knots. Inventory Slots, 1500. Combat Specifications, Default Weaponry. Heavy Cannon ATK. 10,000. AA Minigun ATK, 2,500. Lightning Harpoon Gun M. ATK, 1,500. Lightning Element Cannon M. ATK, 7,500. Hull Def, 20,000. Hull M. Def, 15,000. The power of this ship seemed overpowered. But from Xiao Mao's perspective, the weaponry was too weak and he needed to replace them with more advanced weaponry. Still, it was enough for a standard fishing boat for Slave One. I want this fishing boat, Munya. Tang Yuan gazed at the ship image and Riley smiled. You called this a fishing boat? It was a freaking Galleon-class battleship. Tang Yuan coughed, that ship, sir? It's the most expensive ship among all, fishing boats. Are you sure? Xiao Mao scoffed, name the price, Munya. 20 billion gold coins as a down payment to commission the shipbuilder guild at Siren City, and 50 billion after the ship has been completely constructed, sir. Hearing the price, Xiao Mao deeply exhaled. 70 billion gold coins were equal to 70,000 packs. Indeed, 
it was expensive as the manager had said. However, in the future, this ship could earn 1,000 to 5,000 packs of profits from sea trading every day. Considering the rewards after the ship was built, investing 70,000 packs now was too cheap. How many months do you need to complete the ship, Munya? I want it as fast as possible. A.A. about two years at the fastest, sir. Too long. Make it six months, Munya. T. That's impossible, sir. I'll pay 100 billion gold coins if you can finish it under six months in a perfect condition, Munya. Tell the shipbuilders at the capital that I'll also provide some of the crafting ingredients to hasten the construction speed. Consider it as a challenge for this commission, Munya. Tang Yuan wiped the sweat on his face. He repeatedly bowed and accepted the commission. Xiao Mao gave him 20,000 packs as a down payment. Tang Yuan signed a contract for the commission and gave it to Xiao Mao. Now that the commission was done, Xiao Mao asked for something else. Manager, by chance, does your guild have Cathalho's essence core, Munya?